morning. I am Joshua Kemble and this is my vloggins and I'm heading to work and yesterday was a really uh, awesome live stream where honestly I showed up to like work on Not Death But Love, The Strange Supernatural Story of Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the book by my sister Lavender Vroman that I, I'm tasked to uh, create as a comic um, by like April and it's like 230 pages. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things of, um, of, uh, working on it. Um, when I sat down to work on it, was not feeling good, wasn't into it at all. And, uh, by the end of the stream, it was like heartbreaking to leave the page because I was so in the zone, um, kind of creating. And this is a reward that I think happens quite often when you show up, uh, for art. Like when you when you have a big project, a big personal project, and you have one of those days where you're experiencing a lot of resistance, sometimes you'll sit down and you'll like suffer through it and it sucks and you don't go anywhere and nothing unlocks. <clears throat> but more more so than not, what I've experienced is the opposite. Where uh, the, it's like the more resistance I feel about a night when I'm working on comics, I'm going to lock in, like, at some point in that session, once I've, like, sat down, drawn, kind of started working things out, something in that process of, like, frustration and then kind of almost surrender to it, uh, to the frustration of trying to do art when you're not feeling it. Um, somewhere in there, something unlocks and, uh, and you get like this just mad inspiration. So that's what I feel today. Um, and that's my reward, I feel like, for uh, powering through and like overcoming. Because when I first sat down to work on the comic page, I just, I felt completely and utterly not into it. I just wanted to go to bed. And uh, by 2 in the morning, I was, like, sad about going to bed because I was just in the zone, in the, in the flow state, I guess, is what somebody might call that in art. And if you're out there and you're kind of working on comics and you find that, like, you're not hitting that flow state, um, a lot of it's, like, just build habits and, like, show up and, and be true to your uh, comic and uh, what's surprising is like it, it unlocks it unlocks when you dedicate yourself it's I don't know I again like I've experienced this multiple times and I'm still mystified by that part of the process that kind of more mystical part of the process because uh, I feel like if you watch yesterday's stream you can see like at the beginning kind of negative attitude wasn't feeling it by the end I'm just full of energy and excitement and life about the project. And uh, it just unlocked somewhere in the middle in this kind of mystical way. And I love it. And a lot of that mystical way was just working through the visual problem solving. Something happens, things unlock, you loosen up, you start drawing better. It's just, uh, I don't know, that's what I've experienced. I hope you guys experience that too, because it's, when you do, it's like the only the only downside, and this is my warning, it, it, like for me, by showing up and working on that comic, now I'm in this position where I hate heading to work right now. And it's not that I dislike my job, I have a great creative job. It's just that like, that page is so exciting now, I can't wait to get home and work on it. I just, I'm really eager to get back to it, get back in the fight. So anyhow, when I was working on that, I thought one of the topics that I wanted to bring up was something I brought up on stream, which is, I think that as cartoonists, um, we should all be exploring, and I don't want to do this in a, you know what, I shouldn't do this in a prescriptive way, I'll just do it in a descriptive way. As a cartoonist... I feel that it is my duty when I'm doing comics to start doing things in comics that only comics can do. And there are some specific things that comics have that are a huge opportunity for artists 
that I feel like sometimes we pass over by like making comics that are like a bunch of little snapshots. Um, there's a few things that I think that are unique to comics that are things that only comics can do. One is the interplay of background and foreground with panels, um, where you can have multiple uh, timelines occurring at one time, or you can have a background that's establishing a time, and then you can have panels within the background that are establishing two different times. So you're basically able to kind of travel through time and also remain still at the same time. Uh, that's a very unique to comics thing. Uh, there are different ways you can play with time in a, um, in a, in like a movie, but the unique thing about comics is there's an interplay between the reader and the artist. So the artist can make suggestions for how the time will play out. We can give visual cues for how the time will play out. But how quickly or slowly it's read is also slightly up to the reader. And because of that, the reader has more control over time when they're reading the work. And the artist has um, more control over the suggestions that can be given people for the time than I think in most mediums. So that, that's one thing that I think is very unique to comics that uh, people should play with. Play with that when you're working on your comics. I, I, should, I keep saying people. That's something I like to play with. I don't know. You guys can do comics however you want. Um, the thing that I did last night that was something that only comics can do is uh, something I first saw being used by Frank King, uh, who, and that's K-I-N-G. Um, and uh, Frank King did a comic strip called Gasoline Alley, and that's the first time that I had seen this executed. And when I first saw it, it kind of blew my mind. Uh, there's some people who maybe it's not the most profound thing, but to me, it was such an interesting solution to storytelling that's so specifically unique to comics. It's one of those things that like only comics can do. Other mediums can kind of do weird iterations of other stuff, but this was a page that was just pure, unadulterated comics being comics. Um, and so, what is that thing? So it's basically like depicting a scene as a whole image, but the scene is gridded off into panels. So what you end up having is like an entire image of one continuous scene, but within the panels that are, that are gridding off the scene, you see characters moving throughout the scene. So what you have is time passing on one single picture broken into frames. And it is one of the coolest things I have ever seen in comics. And uh, Chris Ware utilizes this a lot too. Um, I've definitely seen, I've seen superhero comics that have done this where they'll have like a fight sequence. Maybe it's in a subway and it'll be like one big shot of the subway. And then it's like, within that there's a bunch of panels breaking out a character within that subway who's like getting in a big fight with a, a super villain or something and they'll break it down where it's like you you get to visually walk throughout this one unified scene that's one image and you get to see the characters kind of moving as different sequential panels throughout that sequence so you, you watch time all at once it's like, for a second, you get to be, like, outside of time, where you can look as a whole and see all of time play out within that location. Uh, so you see every movement a character's gonna make. But you also are able to kind of uh, zoom in and see each singular time in their location throughout the, uh, throughout the larger picture. It's a really cool thing. If you're curious what I'm talking about, check out uh, yesterday's live stream. I actually showed an example of Frank King's uh, Gasoline Alley where he did this. 
Uh, and I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm very excited about it. And I, you know, when I first started it off, it's a little ambitious. I've done this a couple times before in comics. A notable one would be a comic that I did called The Park, which you can see on my website, that was uh, made for Relief Magazine, or Relief Journal, not magazine. It's a college uh, journal, literary journal. Um, but yeah, I ended up doing like a limited edition poster for one of the Relief Journals uh, of The Park. And it's it shows a couple and kind of their history in Central Park and it starts with them as children and then it ends with them as uh, old uh, dead people basically it shows them go from from youth to age, old age to death and it all happens in one unified scene of a park over 24 panels and so you actually see time pass in the park so you see the park gradually become a different era of time you see their clothes change um, and the seasons change until they're kind of in a more present current time and in that era you know we, we see them both die and so I think or I can't remember if it's both of them dying or it's like the man's wife dying or whatever but we see like even their wedding everything um, now it was just the reason I did that was I think I had done that after being exposed to Frank King's, uh, like this, this device that Frank King was using. And I was like, I need to play in that sandbox. There are a million other things that I can think of that only comics can do, but this is where I'm going to kind of ask you guys, what do you like to do in comics that only comics can do? And, um, do you, ha when was the last time when you were making comics that you thought about it and you were like, um, what is something that I can do in my comic that only comics can do that are uniquely comics? Um, and I think that this is kind of my challenge. You don't have to take it, but it's one to consider. If you don't have an answer to that, Maybe come up with something. The next comic you're doing, think, for one page of this comic, I need to do one thing that only comics can do. Uh, one thing that is so uniquely comics that if they had to adapt this to a film or adapt this to an animation, <clears throat> they would have trouble because it's so uniquely comics. That is kind of one of the things that I am going to be continuing to try to kind of include within my comics um, and, you know, hopefully, like, scatter that kind of thing throughout this entire book. That's my goal, is, like, I think we need to, as cartoonists, at least I think I need to, as a cartoonist, be more cognizant of that. Like, and remember, like, comics are a very unique medium and I think that the trick to why comics are so great has a lot to do with the sequence of time and the interplay between the reader playing out the time much like a musician who would play out like music notes. I think uh, a, a, a good reader of comics is going to be kind of reading panels as if they are music notes to a musician and much like a musician they while reading it, play it out like keys on a piano or chords on a guitar. And I think that is a uniquely comics thing and we should all do it.